27-year-old Chris Chapa is shot dead. The shooter, his 22-year-old girlfriend, Claudia Esquivel, a police cadet. Choking back tears, she swears it was an accident. Cops suspect it was murder. But there was a third person in the room that deadly night, an eyewitness to the shooting who's about to crack this case wide open. We know that from the interview with her son that he did witness this. That's right, Claudia has a son, a four-year-old little boy who was in the apartment during the time of the shooting. And sadly, he had a front row seat to the horrific violence. Not only did he see what happened, uh, he was in the range of fire. The trajectory of the round actually traveled over where her son was laying on the couch, the blanket that he was covering up with while he was asleep prior to him being awoken by the arguing. Uh, the blanket actually had blood spatter on it. Very close proximity. Very. And police investigators believe this little boy holds the answers to exactly what happened that terrible night. The first thing that we tried to do was get a statement from him and find out how much he had seen, how much he had witnessed, and we learned that he had witnessed ev everything. Everything? Do you come sit right here? The four-year-old's interview with a child forensic interviewer. My name is Cheryl McCartney. I work here at the Advocacy Center for Children. My job is to talk to boys and girls just like you. All right. You said that your your mom was crying? Yeah, her the fighting. The fight home. The fight. Okay. The boy is dead. The boy is dead. Tell me who shot Chris. Mommy shot him. Mommy shot him. Okay. Mommy's hands are dirty and stinky. They're dirty and stinky? Yeah. Tell me why they were dirty and stinky. They need to wash your hands. Oh, okay. Tell me what she had on her hands. Bleed. Uh, bleed. What color was it on her hands? Red. Red. Bleed. Okay. I'm going to bleed. The boy draws a picture, a picture worth a thousand words, according to Detective Sollenberger. In the photo, he described the face as being Chris. He described this as being a gun and uh, bleed on the floor. Then this telltale action. Claudia's son begins coloring outside the lines. He was given a coloring sheet, but he scribbled out the drawing, the part that we in would have anticipated him coloring. Um, he scribbled that out and he drew um, a, f a face here with a gun. And these scribbles he described as bleed on the floor. So he scribbled through the coloring book picture that you had and drew his own picture of his mother killing Chris? Yes. Tell me who was fighting. Chris and Mommy. And tell me what they were fighting about. Um, again. They were fighting again? Okay. Did you see that happen? I saw. Chris is dead. He breathed. Oh, okay. And Chris needed to fix. Okay. Mommy's going to fix Chris. She's going to fix him? Yes. Okay. Chris's tongue hurts. According to cops, the boy is describing Chris's blood-stained t-shirt marked with his mother's bloody palm print seen here in this police evidence photo. It's a detail only an eyewitness to the shooting would know. Chris died. Okay. Come here, Bree. Okay. Chris needs to go to the doctor. He needs to go to the doctor. Chris died. He died. He can't get up. I'm finished. Okay. I don't want the color. Okay. The interview is over, but tragically, the trauma will last a lifetime. The words of Claudia's own son point to his mom as the killer. Claudia faces five years to life in prison for felony murder. Following closing arguments, jurors took just over six hours to return with a verdict. She was convicted uh, and sentenced to 27 years in uh, the prison system. And up for parole in 13 and a half years, but not if Chris's family can help it. For every day that she tries to convince someone that it wasn't her fault, even though she had the training and knowledge of how to deal with a handgun. My family will be there to tell her no. And we will be there every step of the way to say, 
you will not get out of jail. But no matter how much time is served, the punishment is endless for both families. It's such a tragedy. You hate to see young people who really had potential. They were just starting uh, their careers and possibly a family and things of that nature to go down this path. And I think if she just hadn't picked up the gun, it wouldn't have happened. Two lives forever ruined over a petty fight when the reality was... He wanted to marry her. Uh, the last time we, we saw Christopher, he pulled us aside and talked about wanting to find the right ring. And um, he talked to my husband about, you know, I want to be a good husband. How do I do that? You know, you got to walk me through this. How do, I, how do I figure this all out? And he was really excited. Yes, Chris had planned to propose to Claudia. But instead of planning a wedding, one family plans a funeral and the other prison visits. She may have lost her freedom by going to prison, but her family can still communicate with her. There is no way for us to communicate with Christopher, the side of heaven. There's no way to describe it, and I don't think there'll ever be a way to really put into words how much he's missed.